children and adults, of course, this time of year dress up in costumes and make merry, celebrate a holiday and the celebration of witches and ghosts and goblins and jack-o'-lanterns. Now witches, of course, there's a long history there with Halloween. Legend tells of witches gathering twice a year when the seasons changed around April 30th or the eve of May Day, May 1st, and also the other one was on the eve of October 31st, which was called All Hallows Eve, or a sacred evening, because that night the souls were supposed to be wandering about. Souls that people that have died and their souls didn't find rest, and they were spirits wandering about, and they would go to different homes, and of course the people would either give them a treat or they would be tricked. So there was these trick-or-treats. That's where trick-or-treat came from. And this, of course, is the idea of the pumpkins, jack-o'-lanterns, were the faces they make. It's really based on an old Irish legend about the drunk Jack. That's where the name jack-o'-lantern came from. One day he was out in the woods and he tricked Satan into a tree to throw down some fruit. And once Satan had helped him he carved a cross into the tree and trapped him there. Because obviously the cross would trap Satan. So this is obviously legend. And then he struck a deal that Satan would leave his soul alone when he died. Of course this backfired. When he died, since heaven would not take him either, when he kept bothering the devil to let him in, the devil gave him a burning ember instead. And he carried the ember in a hollowed out turnip sometimes described as a rattan, to light, to light his way as he wandered through eternal darkness on the earth. Eventually this was replaced with the pumpkin in America and became the modern jack-o'-lantern. These customs came to America really during the time of the Great Famine, the Irish Potato Famine. And a lot of the Celts of the Irish people came to the United States and they brought this, this holiday with them. And while it's pagan in nature, Halloween has taken on some Christian connotations, believe it or not, of spirits looking for a place to rest. And where did all this begin? Way back with our pilgrim fathers. They knew about the Halloween's occult roots. In fact, they banned celebrating Halloween in America for a long time. It was not really celebrated in this country until 1845. That's right around 1844, isn't it? Isn't it interesting, everything that took place right around 1844? The number of different denominations that were started and things like that. And the spiritualism, and that's, by the way, is when the Fox sisters, the Fox sisters heard rappings, and they lived in upstate New York, and they heard rappings on the wall, and they asked questions and asked for answers, and they said, not twice if it's a yes or once if it's a no. And so they would ask this, spirit, whatever it was, a question, and they say, is that true? And they'd be, is it, or is that true? And they'd be, and they began carrying on conversations, and this is really the beginning of modern spiritualism in America. So, this is where that all came from, way back then. And so, Halloween has a tremendous uh, background in in Druidism and in paganism, obviously. And for some reason, perhaps it's because there's evil in the world or more likely because of our exposure as children to that which would frighten us, many people are afraid of the dark and things that go bump in the night. I was when I was a kid. I remember I was somewhat scared of the dark. And it might have been because of these watching Dracula and Frankenstein's movies. In the world. Of course, that was all in black and white back then. I, we, I don't know. But still, it was scary. Nothing like today. It wasn't all bloody and all that kind of stuff. But still, this guy walking around, like, and scaring everybody to death. Or someone who was, you know, yeah. yeah, that was, and that made big impression on my little mind. And so people became afraid of these types of things. But really, are there such things as evil spirits? And do they really try to communicate with man? The Bible tells us that there is. 
that there is such a thing as evil spirits who try to, to reach deep into our hearts. And I believe that Satan, who is the father of all evil spirits, has really tried to reach into our homes today through television, video games, and things like that. I mean, you don't have to... You can look at any lineup, and of course, it seems like there's more and more TV programs and movies coming about, coming out about ghosts and about dead people walking around that aren't really dead, the undead, the living dead, all these people that aren't dead. And then, of course, even spiritualism itself, the supernatural. There's a one on there. It's called the supernatural. Spirits that have all these kinds of powers. Is it really real? It was for me in academy. I'll never forget when I was in high school or academy in my uh, senior year, there was a fellow there named Terry. It happened to be the same name as my brother, but it wasn't my brother. It was another fellow named Terry. And one morning he woke up and he was scared to death. And he tried to explain to the dean, who was our boy's dean at the time, what had gone on, and nobody believed him. He said, someone tried to kill me last night. And I said, well, the dean said, what do you mean someone tried to kill me? They were choking me and I couldn't breathe. Sure enough, he had red marks around his neck. The next night, his room caught on fire. We all had to evacuate the dormitory. And we thought maybe he did it. We couldn't figure, why would he catch his room on fire? Come to find out, he had a Ouija board in his room and he was playing around with a Ouija board. I'm telling you, people think that Ouija board is just a game made by Parker Brothers, but it's not. Ouija boards go way back and people believe they can communicate with the spirits and find answers from them by doing that. And true enough, Satan will communicate with people through Ouija boards. But the thing is, once you allow the devil into your home, I had another lady that called me when I was in St. Pete. She said, Pastor, you need to come over to my house. I said, what's going on? She said, my doors and my cabinets are opening and shutting all by themselves, and the doors to bedrooms are slamming shut. And I'm thinking, man, why do I want to go over there? I don't want to go over there. <laughs> I had never come across anything like that in my life. Her name was Miriam, sweet lady. And uh, so I went over there. She says, Pastor, I need you to pray. I need you to bless my house. I said, does this happen very often? She said, it happens almost every night. And I can't sleep and I'm scared. I said, and then I began to ask her questions. I said, what is going on in your life? I said, and I asked her, I said, do you have Ouija boards? Are you, are you into spiritualism or tarot cards or anything like that? Some people think there's nothing wrong with tarot cards. Tarot cards is another, meth another method people use to try to communicate with the dead. People, we cannot communicate with the dead. The dead are in the grave. There aren't spirits floating around somewhere, and they don't go right to heaven or right to hell. They're in the grave sleeping, waiting for Jesus to come. When people start communicating with the dead or the spirits, they're communicating with demons. These are satanic demons. And once you invite them or allow them into your home, it is not so easy to get rid of them. Jesus had to cast seven demons out of one woman. Seven. And we don't know that he did that all at once. We apparently believe that he may have done that at different times. Satan, once he gets a foothold into our lives, he can do it through television, he can do it through videos and movies, he can do it through types of music that we listen to, the types of material that we have in our house, reading material, other things like that can be satanic. And once you open that door, if you have stuff like that in your house, you need to get it in the trash bin. You need to throw it out. Get rid of it. And I asked her about that. I, and I began to ask her and question her. And she says, well, in the past, when I was young, and she began to tell me some experiences that her parents, her mother was into spiritualism. Her mother was into witchcraft and things like that. And she came from overseas. She didn't come from America where that stuff was prevalent. 
Folks, spiritualism is alive and well in the United States of America. And people are following it and believing in it. And it is so very dangerous. So I'd like you to turn in your Bibles with me to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 18. By the way, they just built a brand new store in Lawrence, Kansas, which is just to sell witchcraft material. People don't realize that Harry Potter is full of spiritualism. So is Pirates of the Caribbean is full of spiritualism. And most people think, oh, these are just innocent movies. No, they're not. Deuteronomy chapter 18, notice what God told Moses. And this is the Lord speaking to him in verse 9. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 9. The Bible says, When you come into the land which the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not learn to follow the what? The abominations of those nations around you that, or that you're taking over. There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire. In other words, they offered their children up as living sacrifices. And you say, well, Pastor, man, I'd never do that. There are, believe it or not, there are still people in the United States of America, there are coven groups, there are witch, witchcraft groups that actually continue to do child sacrifices. I, there's another story I could tell you about Battle Creek, Michigan that my brother actually experienced when he went to the police station. He was talking to the detectives there in Battle Creek, Michigan this a number of years ago. There had been disappearances of young people and they found these young people. They were naked and they were, I probably shouldn't go into that, but they were murdered. And where they found them in the woods near Battle Creek, a detective told them, and they never printed it in the paper. There was all kinds of pentagrams and satanic signs where they had offered these kids as sacrifices. This happens in the United States of America. The Bible says, don't make your sons or daughters pass through the fire or one who practices witchcraft or a soothsayer or one who interprets omens or a sorcerer or one who conjures spells. Some people think, oh, these, these spells are just, just games. It's nothing to cast or a medium, or a spiritist, or one who calls up the dead. For all who do these things are an abomination to the Lord, and because of these abominations, the Lord your God drives them out from before you. In fact, the Lord told him in another place that they were to be stoned. They were to be killed. God did not approve or make allow for any of that kind of thing. And yet how many parents today are sacrificing their children on, on the altar of this kind of stuff? It's not as innocent as it seems. The Bible tells us that there are evil spirits, but that in 1 John, if you go way to the back of the Bible, in 1 John chapter 4, notice what the Bible says. 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 to 2. 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 to 2. Way in the back, almost to the book of Revelation. Go way to the back, past Hebrews, past James, past 1st, 2nd Peter, then 1st, 2nd, 3rd John. 1 John chapter 4, the Bible says, verse 1, Beloved, do not believe every spirit. But what are we supposed to do? Test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God, and every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. You see, back in John's day, the spirit of Antichrist was already present in the world. And I don't have time to go into a study this morning on the Antichrist. But believe it or not, the Antichrist is not coming in the future. The Antichrist is already here. A lot of people believe that the Antichrist is still coming, that there's going to be seven years tribulation, and during the seven-year tribulation, the Antichrist will come. That's not true. 
The Antichrist is already here. And we need to know who it is and what it teaches and what it believes. In Deuteronomy 29, 29, the Bible says that the secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of his law. So because we don't understand death, yes, it's a mystery. When Lazarus was raised from the dead, and Jesus raised him up, he did not give a discourse or a dissertation on what it was like when he was dead because he didn't know anything. When you're dead, it's just like you're sleeping. The Lord didn't call him back down from heaven. The Lord just called him out of the tomb and gave him life because Jesus is the resurrection and the life. And the Lord can do that. But he was in the tomb. So death is a mystery. Nobody goes beyond it and says, here, let me tell you that there was this bright light and I went to this bright light and then I saw Jesus and I was in heaven and I did all this. No, that's not true. The first lie that was ever told sought to reveal this mystery when Satan in the Garden of Eden told Eve that she could eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil and she would not die. When the Lord told her that in the day that you eat of it, you will surely die. And Satan says, no, you won't die. Yes, you will die. And from that day that they ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, they began to die. And could you imagine how Adam felt when he walked out of that garden and he saw the first flower wilt and die? And he knew that it was their fault because of what they did. Or when he saw the first bird fall to the ground and the first bird flutter and die. And he said, that's our fault. We did that. His sorrow must have been hardly more than he could bear. Probably more than what we have for even our loved ones that pass away. The Bible says there's coming a day when Jesus is going to have show us the victory that he has gotten over death and he's going to raise up all those that love him from the grave. What a day that will be when Jesus comes and the trumpet will sound and the dead in Christ shall rise first. The tomb does not, Satan cannot keep God's people in the grave. No way. Because Jesus has gotten the victory over death and we have something to look forward to but one of the great last deceptions of Satan, I want you to show it to you in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. Let's go over to 2 Thessalonians. It's in the middle of the New Testament. 1 and 2 Thessalonians, just before 1 and 2 Timothy. We're going to look at chapter 2 and look at verses 9 and 10. Well, actually, we're going to start in verse 7. Let's start in verse 7. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7. Here's some pages right and I'll just give you a minute to get there. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7, it says, For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he's taken out of the way. And when the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming, the coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. For this reason... God will send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Now, God does not tempt any man. The Bible makes that clear. God tempts no man. So when we say God will send, actually the correct interpretation of that is God will allow. God will allow them to have a strong delusion. That lie will come from Satan himself. But God will allow it that they all may be condemned 
who do not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. God is merciful. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God loves everyone. He has compassion on everyone. But everybody has to make that decision for themselves, whether or not they want to accept Jesus Christ as their Savior, and they're going to follow the Lord Jesus Christ as their, as their Savior and God. He doesn't force anybody. But I'm telling you, there's coming a time when there is going to be a deception that's going to be so strong that unless we love the Word and the truth of the Word of God, we will be deceived. We will be deceived. Isaiah 8, verse 20 says, To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this Word, it is because there's no light in them. We need to test the spirits according to the Word of God. We need to test every minister. We need to test everybody who says they're preaching the truth according to the Bible and see that it is true. We're living in frightening times, it's true. But Lord told us, the Lord tells us in Matthew 5, 30, uh, 5, 650, he says, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And in John chapter 14, 27, he says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. We don't need to be afraid, but we need to know whom we believe. We need to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ with all of our hearts. And don't let Satan deceive us. Don't let Satan... And, and folks, these things may seem innocent, but I'm telling you, Satan is using these things to deceive the world. Hollywood has made a bunch of money off of this deception. And they're promoting it. Folks, do not be deceived. Believe what the Lord says. Do not follow after these evil spirits. But stay true to the Lord. We don't have to be afraid of things that go bump in the night. Because where Jesus is, there is light. And the darkness is dispelled. So this morning I want to encourage you. Put all your trust in God. And you do not need to be afraid of what Satan can do. I'd like you to turn in your hymnals this morning to number 260. Hover over me, Holy Spirit. This is the spirit that we want in our lives, is God's Holy Spirit. Number 260. Shall we stand as we sing? <laughs>